So a lot of you were in my comment section asking how do I do certain things for my animatics, animations, whatever you want to call them. I would just reply to them on what you do, but sometimes my fingers get tired and that takes a lot of typing and it's too hard to explain. So I decided to make a little tutorial series, but this is going to be part one out of a many part tutorial series because this part is going to be how you start up your first basic scene in Blender. Now this you don't really need to do, but I just choose to do it because it just makes things better in organization. So just delete this cube because we don't need it as of now, and take this light because we don't need it. It's just going to make everything brighter than it normally is. All we need is the camera and this collection over here. So just close it up and name it to map because that's where we're going to import our map. And then right click this and change it to Assets. You don't really need to do this, but I just do it to stay organized. So when I'm looking for something specific, I don't need to scroll through a bunch of different collections in part. Now, the next thing you want to do is get your audio. Usually what I would do is just go on YouTube and find an audio that I like and go to 320ytmp3.com and just copy paste the link into the little search engine. Then when that's done, it'll show the audio and you just click convert. And after that's done, you'll be provided with a download link. Just click it and save it to a specific file because then you'll get lost and have to scroll through a bunch of other files. Then I will go to audio trimmer so I won't have to scroll through all these different parts. You click choose file and go to the, where the audio is originally located. And after you just play around with these and scroll to the parts that you want. Now you have a crop and the audio about to be downloaded. Just take away the audio trimmer part so you won't if you have a long text, you won't accidentally get them both confused. And just make it overwrite the current file. Then you click save. Then you have your audio. Now you have your audio, now we need to go into the settings. You go over here, I just like to turn on ambient occlusion, motion blur, and bloom. And come over here and change this to 30 seconds. You can go up here and change this to video sequencer. And go to playback and change this to sync to audio. Then change the audio to scrubbing so it can scrub through the audio. And click Shift A and click Sound and look for your file. And now that you have your audio imported, just listen through it and just trim it at the part where you want to stop it from playing. Like for instance, I would like to stop it over here so now it will end from the 107 frames point. And it'll just keep looping through so you don't have to just do all of this in one shot. It makes everything a lot easier. Because, to be honest, it's impossible to do everything in one scene unless you use collections, but that's really, that's really laggy and it takes up a lot of time. Now that you have your audio, now you can start importing things, but I like to save my shots first before I make a strong mistake of the thing crashing. Then I have to do everything all over again, and that's a real pain, so I just like to save my file and just name it Shot1. And just click save blender file. Now you can see that the file has saved. Now we can import some maps. Now go to file and click append. Don't click link because I think that will... I think that means you can't move anything. It'll be stuck in this current position. So click append and I just like to go to where I saved all my files. Now the map I'm using is from UFMP since I got early access to it, but... Raspberry imported Araya Entertainment's versions of everything, so you should be good using those. Now, when you're about to import something, click Import Collection, and make sure you have the collection that is called Map selected, so it can so all the collections can go inside the map. Now, just click A to select all these, and you appended the map. And you can see that it's saved inside the map file, so now you don't need to worry about everything schooling up and it's saving into the wrong place and you have to look for everything. So just click G and move the map until where it looks perfectly centered, so if you ever were to import a character, then you wouldn't have any problems. Now if you want to move something on a certain angle, click G, Y, because I need to move it on the Y angle. And there we go, we have your, you officially have your map imported. Now that we have a map, we need a character. So click Assets, and I'm going to use Phantom Freddy for this, so right click on the Assets and click New and change it to Phantom Freddy. So now, every time when you need to look for Phantom Freddy, then you can just click the collection and you'll find all his files. 
to click File, Append, again, and find where Phantom Freddy is. The one I'm using is, once again, by UFMP, so... Thutner made his own version of the Phantoms, but I ported them, so you can check out my DeviantArt page to find it. Click Collection and append everything, well, except lights, because that's going to ruin the scene, but... Click Feet and the Suits, just collect all the parts that need to be imported. As you see, he's a huge man, so we need to scale him down to the normal size. Scale him down to where it looks normal. G and Z to lower him to look like his feet is perfectly centered onto the floor. And you have imported Phantom Freddy, but go to pose mode and reset the pose because you don't know if the pose might be messed up. Like here, his foot is. His foot's clipping through the floor because he was too big and he was squatting down, so. Scale it again. Keep him up a bit. Now we have Phantom Freddy locked in a certain pose. Okay, now that we got a character, we need a camera. So I'll just click this icon or you can click numpad zero and it'll take you to the camera. Hold shift and whatever this icon is. I'll have it in the video if I remember. But you just hold it and... You use the WSAD keys to move, and you just pose it wherever you want. But I like to change the millimeters part over here, because if you were to zoom into the character while animating it, it will look dumb. So just change it a bit, but not too much to the point where it will look like the shadows disappear in the render. Like here, this will look good. So just reset it, point it up a little bit. There we go. We have our camera inside. Now, the what I want to do now is pose my character so I can get a feel on what I want the scene to be. Like, not too dramatically or not to whatever you want the pose to be, just a random pose, just so you can see if it actually looks good in the lighting. But these models have IK and FK bones. Like, if I were to do this or do this, then the character will move around with it. But note, if your thing starts to lag a little bit, I recommend turning on this simplify feature and just turning everything to zero because then you get some easier movement but I don't need it because my thing isn't lagging so you can just change it to a pose that you want There we go, now we have our character in a basic pose that we like. Now this may lag a bit, but I want you to go to this little icon over here. Not this one, because this one will take longer to load if you just go there right off the bat. So just go here, just so you can see how the textures are looking. You see we have everything looking perfectly fine. Now I would recommend if you have a glossy floor to turn on screen space reflections, because now you can see that what it's reflecting Phantom Freddy onto the floor and Chica's beak is reflecting things onto it as well but I need to find out how to make something certain just reflect instead of making everything reflect because as a minute this kind of looks like trash but I'm just gonna turn this off for now because it's a bit laggy now that we've seen our footage in shaded view now we need to go to texture view and see how the line looks like and as you can see it looks garbage so this needs to be black and as you can see, it still looks garbage, so we can make our own lights, so take the lights that you see in the scene. Make sure you hold shift while doing this, or you're just going to select one at a time. So when you hold shift, now you have both of the lights selected, and you can just click delete and get rid of them. So now when you check here, it's basically completely dark, so basically we can just go into here, and search up shift A and click light and put points. But make sure we gotta have this selected, or we gotta make another collection called lighting. So we can disable it or enable it anytime. So shift A, light, point. So now every time you look inside here, 
you can see you have a little light moving around. So just angle it and position it wherever you want it to be. And you can change the brightness. You can change how bright it is. You can change how dark it is. But with bloom, you should be aware that things are going to start glowing. But you can change how light it is. At this point, I want the scene to be a little orangish, greenish. But I like to make it a bit dark, just so the color can look a bit realistic. Because let's just admit, nothing's just going to be a plain green color. Position this forever. I'm probably going to speed past this, unless I have something important to say, but yeah. You know, if your shadows start doing this weird thing, it's because you have soft shadows on. So, you need to close this up, then go to shadows, and turn off soft shadows. Now your shadows just look perfectly normal and hard. But, you need like, to change this to take quality pictures as well, because if you were to get close, then it will look like crap. It just look very pixelated and unrealistic. Now when you look around the scene, you have some basic lighting, and you can turn on the screen space reflections again to see how everything is reflecting onto the floor. Now something else I like to do to give my animations a little more spice is add some fog. So click Scene Collection again, and click New Collection, and change it to Fog. And when I told you we needed the cube later, click Shift A, Mesh, Cube, and just scale it across the entire scene. Then when you go here, you can see it's just completely in the way, so... Go here. And go to Shader Editor. Click N to get rid of this annoying panel. And... Click New. And as you can see, you have the principal BSD app, but we don't need that. You need to delete it. And change this to... Principal Volume. And once there, you don't plug it into the surface, but you plug it into Volume. Now you see we have some fog, but as you can see, this looks too dense, so we need to lower the density. I usually like to put it at 0.9. And when you go here, it doesn't show that it's that visible, but I want it to be a little orange, greenish color. And make the emission strength at 0.9. Then you have some fog a bit visible in the scene, and change the color to... Whatever you want it to be, but make sure you make it a bit dark so it won't look completely trash. When you go in your render view, you have fog, but make it a bit darker so it won't be that visible. Play around. Just play around with the colors that you want for a bit. And as you can see, these will start flickering since... They have lights over there, and they will appear through the fog, but I myself still don't know how to get rid of that, but I'll update you when I do. Just for now, make them, just put them somewhere where they're a bit less visible to the camera. Oh, you must be aware that we're trying to move things around. Turn on these and make this unclickable. But first, we gotta go here and see if we moved it or messed it up. No, it's fine, so... You gotta make sure this is unclickable. Then when you go here, no matter how much you click, you can't click on it, so you won't screw anything up. As you see, we have a good looking scene, but I'm gonna take the fog and make it a bit less dense. Ooh. Eight. That might work. But also if you darken it, it also becomes less visible, but you don't want it to be completely gone. Just don't want it to show up a bit. 
You don't want to make the color just a bit too, too saturated because then it'll just look odd. That looks good. But I want his eyes to glow a little bit more, so. You click on his eyes with the texture shadow so it can draw. I make sure I made it have that thing. When it comes to emission, just change it to the amount that looks good. There we go. That looks a lot better. So now when you look, you have your first scene, but we're still not completely done because it's always nice to enable depth of field. Now to add depth of field to your scene, you need to click on your camera and go to the little camera icon and click depth of field. Now you see it's just obnoxious and blurs everything out, but you need to go to viewport display limits. So now you have this little plus icon, it'll show up with how far it's going. And the plus is over there, so that shows why the thing is so blurred. Oh wait, it's over here. So you just kind of take it and move it until it's directly centered on your character using. Then to go into the depth of field settings, you use focus distance, you'll move it around. So take it and push it to. Until it's right directly on him. Is that on him? No. So now everything else in the background is a bit foggy. Well, you have this in the scene the main thing, but if it doesn't look that obvious, then try turning this down a bit, but if we turn it down too low, it'll look like absolute trash, so if you still don't have what you want, just play around with the turn around with this for a bit then go down, it looks like the background of your scene is blurred then you see it with fog then it'll look like this. You can see that it reflects and you have your first scene. But what I like to do is do a little compositing. So I like to go to here, use nose and shift A and search up lens distortion. And turn that to bits and change this to 0 0.05. I like to desaturate the render a bit, so search up hue saturation and go to 0 0.955. So that'll be pretty good. So, oh lord. So then you can just go here and make sure you disable the fog so you can't see it, but in the render it will be visible. So that's why these are turned on. So. Now make sure you save your file so you won't lose any of your work and you click render and render image. And voila, that's all you do.